Good evening everybody, I am Little Miss Monster Maker and this is Mad Mike and this is another video review from Maven's Movie Vault of Horrors. So last night we <clears throat> went to Derby Quad, Derby Quad, Derby. <laughs> <laughs> to see the 11.30pm viewing of the new Suspiria remake. <laughs> and to be quite honest, we haven't stopped talking about it since and we haven't stopped smiling since we saw it. And we also affected our dreams last night. Yes, we also dreamt about yes. uh, the new Suspiria film in our own different ways. Yes. The uh, thing is, we're really highly shocked and I don't think we intended to do a video about this. Not as avant-garde, but um, it's, it's definitely worth doing one. I was kind of lost for words as the credits rolled and we didn't really say anything to each other until we got out <laughs> of the cinema, didn't we? I think we were both trying to gauge, we didn't dare say how much we enjoyed it because with a film like this, with it being such an art house production, it does have that tendency to make you appear a bit um, <sighs> pretentious. pretentious if you say you enjoyed it um, as it's you probably a, yeah. gathered from me and Mike. We don't really do pretentious and to be honest it was what I expected when we went in there and after about 10 minutes of walking back to the car I think I turned to you and said I absolutely loved that film. Yeah, we decided we loved it. Um, I, I know what I wanted from this film but I didn't know what to expect if that makes sense because I was never a fan of the original Suspiria. I'm not a massive fan of Argento. As we've reconfirmed today by viewing the original. The original Suspiria uh, this afternoon. Way, way too much style over substance. I do like his style, he's got a fantastic art, but again, like I said, style over substance. So I've always said from day one since the first moment I watched Suspiria uh, that it needed a remake. I'd welcome a remake and I would go and see it. You were. Uh, too sure whether you wanted to go and see it. Uh, when I heard about the remake, it would have been about six months ago, and the first thing I said was, oh no, not another remake, and turned my nose up at it as soon as I saw <laughs> the initial posters, because I've never been one to really buy into um, art house productions. I think Antichrist was the last, what I'd call an art house movie that I watched, and as much as I enjoyed certain aspects of the film. <laughs> uh, I really I really could not get along with any of the pacing, um, the pretentiousness of it just being once again style over substance. There was an underlying storyline there. See, I, I, I liked Antichrist. Well, I didn't like it. Yeah, right. It was really boring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I didn't, I watched the trailers and I thought, oh no, this is going to be awful because at the same time I was also viewing trailers for a Climax and I was overwhelmed by all the potential, pretentiousness. Potential, yeah. But I will say the one thing that swayed my uh, eventual opinion was the fact that Tilda Swinton is in this film and as much as she is an, an anomaly. She's she's very. I wouldn't I wouldn't even know where to begin to describe her. I yeah. don't particularly want to know anything about her uh, her real life views. Anything. She's a character. She's a person that I've always enjoyed her acting. She's enjoyed a, her she's for just her acting. Yeah. Just such a strange. She's got like you said the screen presence of yeah. her, and it was her her role in. We need to talk about Kevin, and I said, "Let's we'll go watch it." Just because it's got Tilda Swinton, and if it's got Tilda Swinton in then it's going to be at least worth watching it for that. And that's the reason that I went. Yes. And I'm really glad we did. So the film was two and a half hours long, wasn't it? Yeah. And I didn't even realise the length of the film until this morning. Um, I knew it was a long film. I kind of didn't want to sit there thinking, God, how far into it are we? Or is it near the end yet? I found the completely opposite happened. I got really immersed in the film and it kept my attention. It kept, it just kept me gripped all the way through what was going on in the actual film and with the characters. 
Yeah, how, how do you think about the timing? I did mention <clears throat> the reason which I'm assuming it's not a huge spoiler, so I'll mention this now, although we will go into spoilers later. Yeah. Uh, there is the film is divided into six acts, acts and an epilogue. Yeah. So I was aware of, and I don't know whether this is because this is a slight um, con, uh, I was quite aware of, oh, we're only into the third act now. Mm. But I think that was mainly because it would have been around one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it started, it started at half eleven. Well, it would have started around yeah. half a quarter. But that was mainly because I wanted to... I think that it's, it slightly took me out. I wanted to really get immersed into it, and it kept bringing me out of it a little bit. But um, that yeah, was I the see, only. I see what yeah. you mean by that? I made it flowed a bit better. If it hadn't had that, you know, second break. It of... really didn't for me to enjoy, even with that in there. That was the only thing I think that made me realise the length yeah. of the movie. We were both worried about falling asleep, being a late night show in, and what I, I yawned once. You did. And that was it once. Did. And I'm terrible for falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, visually, um... visually, um, this is where because the, <coughs> the next thing we'll talk about is comparisons to the original Suspiria, Argento Suspiria. Visually, this is very mute compared to uh, to, to Argento's. The the colours aren't there. There is a small section at the end where the colours are there. And, perhaps in a nod to it. Um, mm. I didn't really, it, it had no, this was not an Argento no. um, film at all. And I'm so glad about that. Yeah. Uh, it's very... There, there, was, there was a definite style there. Yeah. And there was definitely substance there. Yes. Which it didn't need all the fancy camera angles or, or flashes of red and blue light here and there. And it did. Because there was a coherent storyline yeah. and, and we listened to Mark... Commode, Kermode, Kermode, contradicts himself. Um, a review today where he said that he took issue with the fact that there was a coherent storyline. Uh... <laughs> Even though he, he admittedly openly said that, that, that uh, the original was style over substance, but he loved it anyway. Uh, yeah, the whole thing about this movie is um, the storyline is the the driving force behind this movie mm. it's not just style although no. like you said there is there's so much subtlety in the style the, in this film the, the, the main style comes from the dance scenes doesn't it really yeah which, which I'm so powerful, surprised that I really like dance scenes You're very, and, and are, are primal, primal very, very primal. primal yeah and ri ritualistic um, and it sort of beat at you in, 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 in your brain almost yeah like, oh, and 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 me personally, I, I'm very attuned to audio uh, manipulation. I've said this before when we watch, especially, uh, especially with Hereditary. Yeah. I noticed the audio, um, the, 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 the low the, bass, yeah. uh, the, yeah. like the brown noise, I like to call it. <laughs> there was a, it kind of builds into a crescendo without being obvious. Yeah. The this it. it it was fantastic. It, I it, can't... It, as it builds, you grow with it. Yeah, but it's not in your face. Oh, no. look, here it is, loud music and yeah. Bleh, yeah. ritualistic dancing. It was so subtle. And there was a purpose to the dance. There was a purpose. Because you mean one bit of the film, you, you even see her turn the music up. Yes. The live performance that they do. So it was all very purposeful. It wasn't just, like you said, to put a clash here and... Whoa! Yeah. You know I, mean? <laughs> I mean, this is the this part where we're supposed to talk why we liked it. Yeah. It's easier to probably pick out the little things we didn't like because we enjoyed it so much. So, yeah. much. Um, so why we liked it is because it's an absolutely fantastic movie that is nothing like the original. No, and the only reason people would go to see this film is if they didn't enjoy the original. The people that enjoyed the original those type of people that don't like Halloween free and we, we don't care <laughs> about those type of people <laughs> so, yeah. um, so we enjoyed this movie because it was such <laughs> really good storytelling yes really good acting even uh, Dakota um, Johnson Dakota Johnson yes for sure it is yeah um, yeah because I always think fanning when yeah. I hear that yeah um, she's we've never I've never seen Fifty Shades of Shit so I I've can't I've seen enough trailers on the TV let's say 
and I've seen her in a couple of things. One of them is uh, Need for Speed, and to me, I've always viewed her as a wooden actress because she's very wooden. Well, she is in this film. And she is in this, but the point is, it doesn't focus. Even though she yeah, is the main, it's not the. It's not. She isn't the main focus, even though she is the main character. Physically, <clears throat> in this, she's very good. Yes, she um, is. Yeah. And you'll you'll see when when you watch it when we discuss it a bit further. Um, and yeah, her, her woodenness didn't it didn't matter, it didn't make a difference <laughs> because they were kind of all like that anyway because they were they were in that setting of pretentiousness, weren't they? It was set in 1977, um, so it's post Second World War. You've got the uh, hijacking of the plane and the terrorism going on at the time as well, which we'll discuss more. So speaking of going into things further. Today we decided to rewatch the original Suspiria. I managed to sit through the first ten minutes 20, and decided 20, 20, 20, sorry, 20, twenty minutes, minutes and decided to get a bath. I took my brandy and my cigarettes and went up to the bath and left Michael in charge of doing this important um, research. Research. A recap and uh, if, that, if my mind had changed. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll leave this to Michael to draw the comparisons between because as far as I'm concerned, the original has approximately about 20 minutes maximum of potential art house short film style. Yeah. About that's it really for me. <coughs> Excuse me. So, okay, Argento's style over substance. There are some really nice, beautifully shot imagery in it. Yes, of course, it's Argento. Um, but as regards to the story, let's talk about the story. Uh, Argento's is, is set in present day, which is it was shot in '77 anyway, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, she's an American that's come over to Berlin um, to join a, a, a dance academy. We have the rain, which is the rain. Yes, the rain. <laughs> anyway, so she's obviously in the original, she goes to the dance school. And she's there. There's a. Uh, it's not as a Dr. Patricia. Really. Yes, I think it is. She's driving out the door and she shouts and isn't she? Then she runs off and she goes to her mate's house and then she ends up getting uh, stabbed and thrown through the glass and hanging from the, that iconic moment where she's hanging by her neck at the top of the ceiling. Um, so in um, in the remake, yeah. we have the same character, uh, which is played by Chloe Maltese or something or other. A her up kick ass hit. We're girl. fucking useless with names. Hit girl. Right? It in, goes, unless, it? unless they've got me, I've got him in front of my face. There's no chasing, there's no murder. She goes to see a, a psychologist. Without getting too much in depth into the spoilers, because we're going to do that yeah. in the next section, um, I think basically the only nod to the original or comparison we can draw is that there were similar names. Yeah, same characters. There were um, um, similar little. Um, same characters, uh, only certain ones in. That were in similar roles. The roles were slightly changed up. But yes. Yeah. Yeah. A few scenic shots, i.e., the rain yeah. and that were similar. Yeah. Um, but as regards to the use of, I mean, obviously you can't forget the Goblin soundtrack. No. The new score is not the forefront of the film which is good this is another good attribute because it although it's a good score and it contributes it's not the forerunner of the film whereas it, whenever people think of the original Suspiria all we think is lovely red lights and the score and goblin the yeah, it's, it's yeah the score building attention <clears throat> Which he did in the dance scenes. Yeah, because because the, the score in this was used primarily in the dance scenes. Yeah, as we say. To, to its greatest effect. At the the ending, there's no other comparison to the original. No, because the, 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 the story of the remake is it's 1977. Uh, in Ber brief, yeah, no spoilers. Uh, yeah, uh, Berlin. Yeah. Uh, same again, American dancer goes over to Berlin to go to the Dance Academy. As a, as a background story, um, there's the hijacking, terrorist yes. hijacking of the plane. Uh, so there's a lot of sort of like um, undertone of political stuff in this. We'll go to it again. Yeah, the spoilers. In the spoilers. Uh, so you've got you've got the main story of the dance academy, and you've got a little bit of political tone underneath that. 
But you've also got a, a new, uh, a, a huge new factor in, in the remake, which is Doctor. The psychiatrist, yeah. Uh, Doctor. Let's just call him the Doctor. <laughs> professor. <laughs> professor. 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 Uh, which is played by Tilda Swinton. Again, yeah. In, in Spoiler. Full, in, in full. Yeah, but look at it. Prosthetic. Full yeah. prosthetic. And the role of the Professor is probably equal to the lead. Oh, in a very different Dakota. Yeah. It's the least, as we said, with this new, new version, the story takes uh, the limelight, whereas it's mm. the style and everything else is just a secondary, bonus. Yeah. It's secondary, but it, it's it just rounds everything off perfectly. There's this. There is a a, a lot of political, um, historical. What's the word in this film? It that. that there is a lot of there is a lot of politics and history in this yeah. film, but it, it did. It was nice to see a story, and don't get me wrong, I don't think you really get drawn emotionally into the story, but it it creates a rhythm to the film. There's yeah, a flow to the film. You, you want to see what happens. That's what, what I said uh, before. Kept me gripped. You want to see where it led to. You want to see what's going to happen next. And even though some people have pointed out as a negative that he tries to use it to date the film, you didn't. I don't feel that it did that. I just feel that it was it was an you integral were, part you, yeah, of the story. You, yeah, it was. Yeah, you were aware. Which we'll that talk it's, about later with the, the that the, it was set in that time period. Because the of, feminine yeah. aspect, the, the, yeah. the, the, the feminist aspect, yeah. and all that. It was integral part of the story. Yeah. So welcome to the spoilers. It is where we ruin it for everyone. <coughs> Excuse me. So, we mentioned how the characters were similar. Uh, and obviously you've got the background, the main story of the dance school. Now, in the original, it was very much put forward that there were... It was an evil school of witches, basically. It was a school run by a school coven, run, coven yeah. of witches. Yeah. Same thing again but it's not an evil aspect and this goes along with the story of the terrorists as well it's almost as if they've created it's, it's a it's post second world war which is mentioned a lot um and it's like this academy has come come out of that and created their own little bubble their own little world away from reality away from the politics well i think that was mentioned in there mm. that for considering they've gone through a war mm. And it was an academy almost primarily run by females. There was a little section in there where somebody mentioned how they managed to keep it afloat yeah. through the war and everything yeah. else. But obviously because they were witches, yeah. that was one of the reasons why. And it was integral. Uh, that, that kind of There's such small references in the film that you have to look out for, which are, are integral to the storyline, as subtle as it is, in places. And this is, I think, where the, the the feminism thing came in. Of course, I put me off straight away, but it's, it's actually nothing. This is one of the, the first pro-female, in a weird kind of evil way, films I've seen in a very long time. Yeah, because uh, obviously, like, like you said, the, the story was they were all a bunch of evil evil witches, and they they they, uh, they thrived and lived on people's death and pain. In the original, in yeah. In the original, whereas, whereas this one, they were more concerned with themselves and um it was a survival and, 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 yeah, yeah in a case of survival, survival and coming through the generations yeah so the the character of susie um which is played by dakota she is very much not a victim no like, she had a like lifelong Su yeah like susie is in the original lifelong draw she to a lifelong place. draw to, 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 yeah, to dancing in order to get to this place and it is you not used, encouraged, and pointed in a certain direction. With the drawing on the map, yeah. Berlin, you know, yeah. and it's, you can see that ever since as, she was as, a as small a child, child yeah. and especially because she was ousted by her own mother yeah. as being the, the bad seed. Yeah. Um, and she came from uh, an Amish, Amish family, yeah. an Amish family in this film. And obviously under the tutelage of um, Madame Blanc. Yeah. It was kind of like, um, like, like a dance move, is it step it up or some shit like that? In, in the way that it was, you know, you're, you're trying to get the best out of the performer. And, yeah. and, but it was all done in a very encouraging, 
sisterhood, motherly kind of way, wasn't it? Yes. Um, and obviously where the, where the film leads, um, are we going to give away the end? Well, basically, this is my breakdown of the film in a spoiler sense. We start off, we open up, and we have um, Dikava coming yeah. through the rain, which would have been the initial opening scene to... Yeah. So it's raining, she's in a cab, she gets out of the cab, we're at a dance school in Berlin. Uh, that's not the beginning. The beginning is right back to her childhood. Yeah. Um, her, her Amish mother is sick in bed. And that's a little bit... Um, because you, you, at first you didn't quite know what the, where we're going with it. There's a, quite, a little bit of surrealism yeah. at the beginning. Yeah. Anyway, so then it, it, it switches over very quickly to Dakota Fanny's character, Susie. Susie. She's the rise at the Academy. Straight away with the, the soundtrack and the visuals, it's already got a very eerie, heavy feel to it. Yeah. <clears throat> as soon as she walks in, a few of the witches already cock her. Yeah. And there's a lot of intensity in them scenes yeah. just with the, the old cliched staring yeah. but it's done very well and rather than being <coughs> somebody they want to kill they, they seem quite uh, they, they admire, not frightened as such they but admire overwhelmed her and it, it's she's somebody that they want to use yep. to enable um, in a positive way their practices so she, she seems all sweetness and light. I'm yeah. not going to give every. I could. I yeah. could remember it so well. I could speak of detail. She's sweetness and light. She has a roommate, which yeah. is um, Sarah. Sarah. Same in individual. <laughs> Madame Blanc was the one that actually tout, uh, that touted her, weren't she? Yeah. She dropped in, saw her, brought her there, invited her. Offered her the lead in yeah. the main dance, straight, pretty much straight, straight away. Straight away, yeah. you can see that there's a that an intensity between these two characters straight away. Yeah. I don't want to give everything away. Yeah. Uh, just just a, a <clears> note <throat> back to the score. That 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 one scene where she first does a like, freestyle sort of there's dance. There's no score at all. They, they completely stop the music. So we don't want no it's, music. It's just, you can dance it's without just her and a breathing. Yeah. Uh, the noise of the feet on the floor, you know what I mean? Yeah. That, that was really And good. that could have been so pretentious, mm, yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't. It's a really hard film to spoil in a way because of the length spoil, of it. The length of it either. and the subtlety of everything, yeah. in, amazingly, in an, an Argento remake. It's so subtle. Yeah. Even though it's been it's not over by somebody like the it's, Mark Kermode <clears throat> for being too in your face and explanatory. It's not, but it's not. But it's not. But this is another thing. He, he, I want to. I, I'm still pissed off about that Mark Kermode this morning. Completely contradicts itself. In the original Suspiria, you've got Udo Kerr, yeah. right, who plays a psychologist, so like, literally sits there with Susie and tells her the history of the dance school <laughs> and that the, uh, <laughs> really Marcus, uh, Marcus was uh, originally a witch from Greece. And then straight after that, there's an old boy who sits there for 10 minutes going on about witchcraft in the school as well. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> but in this, nothing's explained. You just, you just, you go along with Actually, the story. Actually, at the it? beginning is Patricia. Patricia goes to the doctor. Yes. Right, this is really, really short cut. Patricia goes to the... The psychiatrist, psychiatrist. <clears throat> says they're all witches at this dance school. He says, yeah. you don't know what you're talking about. It's you're delusional. Delusion. Yeah. Right. Patricia goes missing. Dakota Fanning's character, Sarah, Susie, shows Susie. up. Everything just is like, whoa, she's like breathtaking. Has Doesn't have to do anything. Lands the lead role. One of Patricia's friends points out that Patricia's missing. <clears throat> Patricia had openly talked about how she believed the teachers at the school were witches. So, Olga... Yeah. she's called Olga says right I can't pretend anymore I'm leaving yeah. as she's leaving this is the first uh, what I'd call her horror scene horrific yeah. scene as she decides to leave Madame Blanc played by Tilda Swinton gives uh, Susie uh, her first run at taking part in, the, in, the, yeah. in the, the dance that they're practicing this at the is, time the improvised dance, and says you yeah, can take the lead style, because yeah. Patricia was the lead she's, yeah. uh, no it was Olga was the protagonist yeah. Olga's gone now you you have a go at this she's like okay and I want to do it as Olga's leaving she's she's um, descending the stairs at this point there's another 
which from the coven sat in the balcony watching the dancers and we see tears coming from her eyes as Olga's leaving down the stairs tears start and this, this from is her all eyes. while Susie's doing her dance yeah Olga gets disorientated <coughs> and comes to the bottom of the stairs and somehow manages to end up in another practice room dance mm. room now I was really impressed with this because the whole room is filled with mirrors yeah. now just to point out it's it's Susie's dance that is controlling Olga through what Tilda Swinton has done to her because yeah. before she started the dance she, she energised she she and energized basically did that yeah. Olga ends up in this room and as Susie starts to dance like the protagonist every move she does is is actually making Olga in this other practice room basically bust every bone in her body now we must have said they used contortionist, a contortionist yeah. to do this yeah. um, her arms are behind her head, her ribs are poking out, she's yeah. on her back, she's thrown against her, and then yeah. she, she urinates herself. It's a, I mean, to be fair, me and Michael were laughing, but that's just our natural reaction yeah. to this kind of thing, because it was like, so awesome. Ooh, ooh. Oh, that's got to sing in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this happens anyway, yeah. so. After this, uh, Susie's character starts to progress through school, a lot of the coven is starting to get murmurs, uh, because... She's the reason the why next, Patricia next, next disappeared thing, yeah. was because she didn't fully accept her position right. to be to be a sacrifice, so to speak, for the yeah. three mothers, which is what the whole film is based um, about. And these they, three they, witches they kind of rushed the process, the, didn't they? The coven, yeah, yeah. the rushed process. I'm not going to give too any much more away. Um, so she progressed at the fact. I don't really want to. I don't want to give spoilers away. It crescendos, it builds, it builds, it builds, yeah. it builds. It's and, too much to give away. And that, um, the trouble with modern horrors, a lot of the times, is the payoff. Especially with films like this. The payoff in this film is, it, yeah. is a one-shot payoff to me. And we talked about it straight mm. away. The pros and cons of this film, to me, probably way up around 90 pro, 10% con. And it would score an 8 for me on if I had to rate it out of 10. The reason why is because the ending has one of the most, uh, for me personally, has one of the most breathtaking shots I've ever seen. Even though I spent half the time trying to break dinner down in my head how they'd done it, <laughs> which is not a bad thing because I was so impressed as I believed that it had to be all um, manually done, this one shot, and thought out very well. The only con for me was the fact that they use CGI in the end scene to its detriment. Yeah, and it they they could have quite easily done it practically, or or in a, in effect without without even going over the top. The, they could have they, they could have even minimised the very fact that they pushed the fact that it was set in the seventies all the way yeah. through. If they'd have used seventies special effects, to me, yeah, that would have been perfect. It, it would have been absolutely perfect. It did not need the CGI right. one bit. It, it it ruined, not ruined, ruin. but it totally de de detracted from the ending for it, me. It, 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 it kind of gave it, it a different it. feel, didn't it? It from... didn't even need any blood. No. It didn't need no. it. It was such a good film. And, and the way it was so um, colour wa washed from all the way through to the end. To the very end, which is... Which is a nod to our gentiles. Very red. Um, which definitely yeah. is. Yeah. But um, that one shot... Just, I don't care. And, and, and <laughs> again, I won't spoil it too much. It's a shot of, of let's uh, call her the head of the coven, and her coven around her. Yeah, what's in left of them? In a red, blood-filled room. Uh, it's breathtaking. And I could have watched that for. I could yeah, watch it on loop. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that wasn't. It wasn't actually the very end scene. Um, but we'll get on to that in a minute. Uh, in the cinemation. Um, but yeah, it was the payoff. The payoff was worth it. You were I got constantly gripped all the way through it. I wanted to see where it was going. I wanted to what happened to the characters. Not because I empathised with them, but because the characters were so well written and well acted. Yeah. Um, well, I think to Tilda Swinton. Tilda yeah. Swinton. Considering yeah. she played three parts in the film. Yes. The film without Tilda would have been nothing. Yeah. And, and I will say that once again. I don't. I, I just. I, regret, I, I just think she's an amazing yeah. screen presence. She wasn't main character, but she was integral to holding everything she together. She was main. She was main everything, really. Mm, yeah. She was. She held it together. She's just so... You can't help but stare at her. Yes. She's just... Amazing. 
Oh, you one. did give it a score, didn't it? For me, yeah. for me, because I've been waiting for a remake for so long, and because it was, it was got to be a few years ago now, it was actually announced that we're going to do a remake. Yeah. Um, and I, was, I went to this with, with very... Um, me too. Uh, low expectations. Low, not, no, not low expectations. I didn't know what to expect, but I had high hopes. Really? Oh, I didn't Yeah. Because um, oh, for me personally, I wanted it to be great, but I was nervous about whether it was going to be or not. So for me, this is a 9 out of 10. If it didn't have the CGI, it would have been a 10 out of 10. Yeah, and it and did no way for me to give it an 8, and I was so, yeah. oof, I was so tight. Yeah. It just didn't need it for a film um, not to need anything at all. But it's been, it's been, we were talking about this last night, it's been 20 years. Uh, I think it was when I was a, a very impressionable teenager when I first went to see Pulp Fiction at cinema. And you know, me and my mate walked out and we didn't say fucking words to each other for about 10 minutes until about two minutes uh, in the car before I got home. Uh, and I haven't seen anything at the cinema that's left me lost for words afterwards. Um, it's affected my dreams last night. Not, not nightmares necessarily, but made me very weird. And there was also, before the film was released, there was a lot of press. <clears throat> saying how this was a very strong feminist film and when anybody sees that word nowadays you kind of just go off. It's kind of become a dirty word, no. hasn't it, because yes. of the modern wave. Third so wave feminism. Through, yeah. uh, for me, this was one of the... No, I was absolutely shell-shocked at how, uh, how this film was actually a true feminist-type film in the fact that it didn't... There was no feminist propaganda at all mm. in this film. It was just primarily a film about women, even though I can't say that I uh, can empathise with them because I don't exactly want to go around sacrificing people. The, the backstory agenda type thing that was pushing through was how these women had survived for years through, through the war, war and um, everything else. There's lots of political stuff going in. Ber the Berlin Wall still up, isn't it? Uh, it's a very divided country. There's a terrorist thing going on in, yep. in the background. And it was like I said before, it was their way of being away from reality, being away from all the bad stuff, yep. and concentrating on each other as, as a as a coven, as a sisterhood. In that sense, yep. the, the word femininity. And the witches yeah. uh, themselves are kind of short spoiled. It was more a means to an end rather than being evil witches yep. and sacrificing people for riches or gain. And the other thing, which I mean. Which I would surprise myself by actually thinking was how the ordinary looking the women were in this film and how it was just a normal mix of women. Yeah. You did have black women, white women, um, women of different ages, they're all smoking while they're rehearsing, <laughs> yeah. especially until yeah. the Swinton walks just around, walk around with an ashtray. Just yeah, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's very normal. It, yeah. it normalises stuff, which is so nice to see. Yeah. And not once was there even one whiff of propaganda in no. this film. Not once. No. Which can ruin. The dancing um, isn't pretentious, it's quite empowering, yeah. very tribalistic. I really enjoyed it. As so a, I, got, really, I found got, it very um, erotic. Yeah. I, I got everything from it without it pushing. It didn't push anything, this film. Nothing at all. You cannot say it, that it pushed it, anything. It created a good sense of, of, um, of uh, unity yes. and empowerment, empowerment uh, through helping each other out. And yes, there were a couple of sacrifices. <laughs> yeah, of course. But, you know. Um, well, no, but, they but had it, over, when they did overstep the mark, it was put right and. It was put, yes. Yeah, we're not going to give away why, yeah. but. But it, but it was done with the best of intention. Yes, it for survival. It, it was for su survival. And uh, uh, in that sense, it was very, to me, it was very paganistic. Yes, it was, yeah. Um, in the old sense of the word paganistic, not. not Satanic paganism is just well, uh, yeah for sacrifices for growing crops. You know, yeah. it was it was yeah. like a different yeah, um, and it was to carry on the coven, and it was and it wasn't because they did it for riches and fame. It was because they didn't want to be a part of what was going on in the outside world because they were strong together and away from the bullshit, which not doesn't just translate through um, feminism. It translates to fucking everything. We've always said we're yeah. happy because we concentrate on our own bubble. Yeah. If we're happy, the kids are happy. Pretty much everybody else that walks into our house or meets and greets us around the street, they're happy as well. Yeah. And, and I think it created a good sense of family in that case as well. Yeah. I think my final points that I'll put across are 
Um, and this is probably going to sound really uh, <laughs> like a feminist, but it's not. I don't think this is a film. Um, because if, if you're a man or a woman equally that isn't willing to give. And I speak for myself personally, I've never been willing to give time to someone who believes pretentious. If you're going to go in there with... I'll watch any option. Initially hating, already hating this film, whereas I used to do that, and I used to go in there and I used to think, I'm going to hate this, it's so pretentious, it's bollocks. I thought, you know what, I'll just give up, I'm just going to just go watch it. And I was so surprised. I don't think... You need to go to the cinema to see it. This was a point that I said Def straight definitely away. Definitely recommend seeing this at the cinema. If you watch this at home, I would not have enjoyed it as much watching it at home. If I'd have watched it at home for the first viewing, I wouldn't have took mm. out of it what I did because the ending needed to be as big, big as it was. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Because it's not um, in your face. Yeah. The rest, of, it's not actually all in your face. Even the ending, I've seen bigger, more mm. endings. It was. I, I would highly recommend that you need to go out and see yeah. it at the cinema while it's in there. Uh, the, the, the horror element of it, obviously you had a bit of gore in it, and, but there was always that sort of dark undertone that it could go down really fucking, like yeah. a really dark fucking path, yeah. and it kind of does at the end, but... Not too not, much. But, but, but not in the way that you think it would. There's some very... There's a sense of dread and a sense yeah. of purpose and a driving force that you don't quite know where it's come from or where it's going which keeps you because it's set in such a edge. normal in, yeah <laughs> it's not all pinks with big huge massive flashing lights on the wall and weird checkerboard it. oddities everywhere yeah. it's quite normal mm. it's very dark drab Berlin 1970s raining all the time mm. and for it to achieve what it achieved with them settings and to be fair it is isn't the most original story to do what it did was fantastic, mm. and as I say, you've got to go see it in the cinema, and I would give it an 8 out of 10. 9 out of 10, so we'll call it an 8 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> that's everything I've got to say, to be quite honest. I'd love to spoil it all, and if any, you know, I hope you all go and see it so we can have conversations about it afterwards. Yeah, you were saying about, if you're not really into that kind of thing, you might not like it anyway. Give it a chance. Because you said, you said to me... I, that you were surprised that I liked it as much as I did, especially. Yeah, I didn't mean it for being a. For me, it was it, not just the, being pa the a, payoff. It sounds really awful. Being a bloke, I don't see what there is really there for a bloke to go and watch the, the, because it's a really strongly uh, fe yeah. female driven film. Yeah, um, but like, other than the payoff, it, it was actually the, the dance scenes. <laughs> I know. There's a lot about, of boobs as well. In not, just, not just because of the boobs, but obviously, in, I mean, in the picture, you see, in, in some posters and, and the clips, you see more in the red robes. Uh, 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 that performance there was very powerful. It was, it was very, it was very primal yeah, and tribalistic. And, and it, it, yeah. it got your heart going. Um, it did. And it, you, you were there, and rather than, it was very well cut as well, wasn't it? Because it yeah. wasn't just pan back <laughs> and watching the girls dance. It was you, There was the dance going on, but there was, it was what was going on within a couple of characters within Basically, the dance Basically, what we're well. saying is... It's, give it a chance. Go out and see it in yeah. the cinema, because it's one of the best films I've seen this year. Film of, for me, so far, I've I would probably say yes, it is the I, film I, of the year. I've not seen everything that's come out new this yeah. year, but this is definitely film yeah, of the year. Yeah, film of the year for me as well. And I knew, yeah. and, and I mean, anybody yeah. that knows me knows how no nonsense I am. It's not just as a horror fan as a film fan. It, it is brilliant. It exceeded, it blew away my expectations because yeah, I did, didn't yeah. know what to expect. Um, and, and not just because I didn't know what to expect, because it just was that goddamn fucking good. Even the pretentious bits. Even the pretentious, yeah. <laughs> I was just like, just, wow, what, what the fuck have I just watched? <laughs> it, yeah, it was great. Yeah, go and see it. So I hope you can decipher something from our review. Once again, every always, time before always, we do these reviews, yeah. we, we say, right, we're not going to waffle on. We we're not going to go off the um, topic, but this is how we do things. Yes. And I hope you enjoy it and I hope you can get something out of this. Uh, um, I hope you all have a, a good evening and it's a goodbye from me. And it's a goodbye from her. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers guys. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.